So, we have learned few programs and then how they can be composed in Java environment. So, initially you may find it difficult to cope with this, but you should not right uh, lose your nerve actually right you have to uh, be patient and of course, if you have any difficulties while you are learning then you should I mean post your questions uh, the difficulties and doubt. So, that we can address we can understand. Now, we have learned about some simple programs in fact, in Java there are two uh, types of programming is uh, there uh, they are called Java application and one is called Java applet. So, in today's lecture we will just have an idea about is not the details learning details learning will take more time. So, a very simple overview of Java applet programming. So, so far the Java applet programming is concerned. So, basically yeah so Java programming for applet. So, the idea about as I told you there are two types of uh, programming the application which we have already learned and then applications are more simply a simple programs actually uh, those are basically in for example, C, C plus plus Python that you have already te tested may be, but the applet is a little bit a difficult different type of programs and then Java is a unique program language which basically supports to do that. So, the name applet actually whenever we want to mention something small. So, it is basically let. So, small application is called Java applet. So, it is basically Java applet is nothing but a small uh, program in Java and but more specifically this a small program is is for uh, writing graphical user interface related program. Now, so applet is basically a view also and then how we can create a view using Java that is the concept of Java applet programming and typically a Java applet will look like this. And if you see the Java applet here it just, just look like a window. So, an applet is nothing but an window as the window is basically the one bar is called the title bar and then there is a name of the windows and then there is basically display area of the windows. So, this is the idea about an applet and then applet this is a very simple version of an applet that I have shown you and here you can include image then multimedia document text link what is not. So, this basically the display area where we can include many components that is required there in case of uh, GI or Windows programming. And there is another example of applet if you can see it. So, you know it this is basically a look of a calculator it is also an applet and all those things are basically close button, minimize button, then maximize button all these things are there and then the, this applet contains a number of components for example, these are the component is called the button and then level and this is the one component is called the area where it will display something. So, it is called the text field area and like this. So, this is an another example of applet that is there. So, we will see exactly how using Java we can create our own applet. Now, so let us write a program for a simple applet. I want to write one applet which basically will display one message hello world. We have already learned how a hello world can be displayed on the screen right in the window command window command prompt, but here it will display through an applet that means one window and within the window the string will be there. Now, here is a very small look of the program and here actually the way command can be placed. So, it is basically command about the program. So, that you usually whenever write program put as many comments as possible. So, that you can understand later on or anybody can understand your program. So, the command 
and these are the two essential import. I told you that Java has lot of packages. If you want to use some package or packages, then they should be imported first. So, the import command here is basically to import all the packages that you want to use in your program. For Java applet programming, the two packages are very essential. One is called the Java dot applet and another is called Java dot awt. So, here, uh, here you can see how one can import the two packages Java dot applet and Java dot awt. And if I write again after name of the packages then Java dot applet or Java dot awt a particular name it is actually a particular class. In Java dot applet there are many classes, but I want to use only one particular class. So, I can mention dot applet. Similarly, in awt I want to mention only one package class called the graphics. So, I use it. So, this way I can import package. Here we have used imported two packages uh, dot a applet and then dot awt and uh, two classes in that packages applet class and then graphics class. So, this is about import statement, then there will be the class definition as I told you, here is also the class definition, here the name of the class that I have discussed is here, the name of the class means this is the program that we are going to write, that means here is the applet program having name hello world, but here one thing we have used it that extends, see it is always a standard syntax if you write an applet, then applet class that you are writing that means, this one should extend one package class called applet. So, this is the standard syntax that you have to do it. So, this is basically defi defining the new class of your applet programs. Now, you can find the difference between in case of simple application we use simple class hello world app and then within this right but here we have to do it. And then this basically the closing and matching second braces indicating that whatever the code that you want to include, the code indicates the what are the data and then methods that you want to include that should be enclosed within the closing and uh, uh, beginning uh, uh, brackets. Now, in this packet in this program we have only one what is called the function we have declared is called the method of course, not function. So, method. So, the name of the method is paint. I have declared here one method public void paint. I will discuss about what is the meaning of this later on. You just simply take it that okay, this is the syntax that you have to follow while you writing the paint method. So, paint and then this argument also you have to mention. So, here we declare one method called the paint method and this method in order to display one string use this kind of syntax g dot draw string. So, this method is basically declared in graphics class that means, this method is already known you can just simply use it and this method will basically print a string on an applet and then this location indicates that where in the applet it will print it is basically 150, 150 means in the Cartesian location coordinate x location and y location. So, that if the applet is say 1000 by 1000 right, if it is a 1000 cross 1000 pixel then it is 150 and 150. So, here the g dot string will be displayed. So, this is the concept here. So, this is basically a simple one applet you can write that will display one string hello world on the applet. Now, let us see uh, how to run this applet, how to of course, editing is by editor come editor say notepad plus plus and then how this can be edit then save and then compile and finally, it can be executed. Now, the name of the applet should be same as the convention that we have already used while you are saving this program as the same as the name of the class. Here the name of the class is hello world. So, name of the file where you should save this program is hello world dot java. So, you can save this program as hello world dot java file 
and obviously in your working directory you can save it and then compilation. We have used Java compiler to compile Java application the same is also valid for here to compile a Java applet you use the Java command. So, and then you write Java the name of the file that you want to compile hello world dot Java in this case. So, it will compile this Java file into class file. So, it will create a class file the name of the class file will be same as the name of the file in Java except the extension dot class it is the same as in case of application that you have already learned. Now, I will come to the discussion of running I mean how to execute this class file. Here is the difference from the application to the applet running in case of applet in case of application we use Java command is basically interpreter which basically execute your program, but in this case Java we cannot use it rather we can use applet viewer instead of Java we should use applet viewer, but applet viewer can run only an HTML file. This means that the class file that you have created should be stored in an HTML file. Now, here is a typical look of an HTML file I do not know whether you know about the HTML file and then HTML tags and everything, but if you do not know absolutely not ok is a matter of concern you will learn it shortly once you learn many other applets and then uh, run it then there, there is a basic syntax that you should follow basic structure that you should follow in order to embed your class file into an HTML file. Uh, here is basically the HTML file look like. So, this is the beginning of the tag this is the ending of the tag as the HTML construct is there this is the body body that means this is the body of the HTML and here is the syntax that you should follow to embed your dot class file. So, applet code and then hello world dot class this is the file that you have created I mean compiled by writing your Java applet program and this is the concept that how large the applet you want to display. So, it is 300 300 indicates that if your total screen size is 1000 1000 then out of this 1000 1000 on the portion 300 by 300 will take to view your applet I mean display your applet on your computer screen. So, 300 300 is the size of the applets that will be displayed. So, you have to write write an HTML file and then write this code in the HTML file and save this program. Now, while you are saving this program you can you can uh, give a name of the file for this HTML the name of that HTML file can be anything name of the file can be anything, but the extension should be HTML. So, here basically this is the applet embedded in an HTML file and then let us give the same name as the program file name that is means hello world, but in this case I have given the name for example, hello Java. So, in this case the name of the program is given as hello Java dot HTML. Now, you can note that the name of the class is hello world, but I have given the different name it is ok even you can give x dot html abc dot html tem dot html any name. So, here it is not necessary to maintain the same name as the file name and then class name not necessary you can make any name, but the extension should be dot html. So, that html uh, can be browsed by any browser. So, once you save this program as an html file then you are ready to run this program. then you are ready to run this program uh, I told you in order to run this program you should use applet viewer. So, use the applet viewer as a command and then you just run the program as an applet viewer. So, here is the command is that applet viewer and then this is the name of the file that you have created say for example, hello java dot html. So, here for example, hello world this is the name of the HTML file. So, if you write it then this file will be executed on execution you can see the output 
on execution you can see the output the the output will look like this so hello world this is the string that it will print here and this is the 300 cross 300 sites and this is the location 150 150 of the point where it will start printing the text. So, you have learned about how a simple applet can be created and then the same can be executed. So, I should advise you to test the this kind of applet programming as a first experience how to write the program and there are many more things are involved while you are writing applet programming I will just try to give I mention few important things here many more things will be discussed when we will discuss applet in details. So, writing an applet needs lot of many other I mean exposure to many more things. So, it will take its own time and we will learn it slowly before going to learn many more details about the applet I just want to have a brief overview about how what are the structure of an applet in general. So, typically the structure that we have learned so far is basically writing a program in Java syntax. So, essentially while you are dealing with applet programming, so three things are there. So, the first thing is that your program that you should write following some Java syntax and then program will look like this and then second thing that you have to embed the program using an html file which will look like this form. So, these are the two things are obvious step that you have to follow and then running this kind of things using an applet viewer and this will look like this output. So, these are the three things so far the java applet programming is concerned the basic steps that you should follow. Now, apart from these basic steps there are many more things involved while you have to develop uh, your java applet and then basically the how a complete java program java applet will look like this is basically many more things are involved there. I just want to highlight the important things that is there. So, while you write a java pro applets the first thing that you should write the import as I told you in our program that we have experienced now. So, there is basically import java dot applet dot applet class and then java dot awt dot graphics class these are the things like. So, it is there import section you have to mention what are the things that you have to import it and once the import is there then main body of the applet class as a main body first you have to start with the naming of the applet. So, that name you have to give one name of your own and these are the things that you have to always fix public class always you have to give it there is no other thing that you can write if you do not write then there will be compilation error. So, without any hesitation you just write that public class and then give the name of your class and then your class should extends the applet. So, this is also another stands. So, this is your own and this is the standard that you have to follow always and then whatever the code that you want to use in your program you should write within the starting and then closing brackets. So, these are the second part I can say and then within this part there may require some variable to declare. So, if you need some variable that is required in your applet programming then you define all these things here and then the different methods that is required to build your applet should mention there. So, there are to all together four parts that you have to think about while you are writing a applet in Java. So, regarding the different parts we will discuss one by one, but in today's lecture we will try to discuss about basic things and mainly what are the different methods that can be there. Here I want to mention again one thing is that any method should not be included there. There are certain predefined methods you can only use them. However, the methods you can 
fill them. That means, methods are fixed, but their body you can write with some codes that is required for your applet. So, these are the things are there. Now, let us see what are the different methods are there in this uh, uh, applet programming. Uh, obviously, the method that we have discussed already with our own applets has only one method, the name of the method is paint. So, this method is there, you cannot change the name of this method in any way, you cannot write any other method of your own name there. So, this is a fixed method that you have to use it, the paint method. Other than this paint method, there are few more methods are there which needs to be written in your program Java applet, the methods are called here for example, we have listed the three methods, one is init, another is start and then stop and there is another two methods are there, we will discuss about destroy and then paint. So, altogether only five methods those you can use in your applet. So, five methods have their own meaning the start method is basically to start running an applet. Sometimes we have to control applet view. So, in that case if you want to control then you use start. Sometimes you have to also close the applet which are view. In one program you can use 3, 4 applets. So, sometimes you have to start one applet, close another and like this. So, in that case you use start and close stop method. And then pain method already we have used it, if you want to draw something on the applet area then you call the pain method and the in the body you can write anything like. And destroy method if you want to remove an applet from your program, so you can use the destroy method while they are running. So, destroy will kill the applet view forever in a program execution. So, these are the different methods are there and I will just highlights or explain one method called the init method. So, let us see uh, the init method how it can be reconfigured in your applet programming. Now, here let us look at the low code, this is the import section already we have learned about it and then this is the name of the applet called hello world and in our earlier program this code was not there. Now, I want to use this code where this code, this part of the code already it was there. So, it is fine. Now, let us see what is the Im impact of this code. So, here basically init one method I have called, this basically call another method resize, resize is the one method which is defined in AWT, it is already there. So, this resize method I call and 200, 200. What is the idea about is that, so whatever the applet size if you mention in your HTML, you can note that in HTML we use usually what should be the size of your applet view say 300, 300, but after this if you call an init method with resize as 200, 200, so applet size will be automatically resized to 200, 200 view there. So, so idea about uh, resize command is there. Now, let us see the output, if you use resize through init method and if you do not use it, how it will work for you. So, so, here is the method the view without any resize. So, this is the program, this is the applet, the 300 or 300 is the default size that we have mentioned and then the output will look like this. So, here basically 300 by 300 is the applet without any resize, but if you use the resize method that means, this code is used and again you use the applet, uh, this is the HTML file, then the applet that will appear with the smaller size. So, resize is basically will allow a programmer to control the size of the applet as it is there. So, this is the one example of uh, resize in init method, use of init method. There is another one use of init method, so that applet how we can give an input to an applet, because while applet is running it is basically via an HTML and then how input to an applet can be given there. So, input to an applet if you want to give then you should give via HTML itself. So, here also the init method can be used for this purpose. Now, here let us look at the code of 
another use of init method which is basically being used here to input pass an input to an applet while applet is running. Now, if we see the code little bit carefully, so these are the import as usual and it basically import applet and awt and dot star is basically another way of importing that means it will import everything if you are not sure about which particular class is responsible for your applet program then you can instead write dot star that means all the classes will be imported into your applet program. Okay, in this case the name of the class that I have given is rectangle test name of the rectangle and uh, this program basically is meant for drawing a rectangle on the applet. So, for this the method that is required is the draw rect it is already defined the graphics package and then it will basically rect and this basically needs four parameter x y w h. So, idea about is that if this is the applet view and then x y is the coordinate that means, from where the applet well, uh, rectangle will start and this is the w and this is the h. So, x y and this is the w and then h. So, this this is the specification that is required. So, we have to pass the input while we call this d dot rect and the four parameter that is required here x y w and h to be passed. And then we want to get the value x y w h from the applet itself. So, for this we can write the init method. So, this is the init method we have write it here and then code in the init method is there. This is a typically I um, mean some code it is required here the idea it is that. So, there is a integer parse int it is declared it is already there in java dot lang package basically it will parse the value that is there in the applet and then store as an integer. So, this is the standard syntax in java and get parameter is basically get a value from the html code. So, this is the get parameter method and then that parameter where in html code it is written as x value. So, in html code if there are certain parameter which is defined as x value, y value, w value, h value they will be retrieved from the html file process it and store them as an x y w h in this case as an input to the parameter applet. So, this is the idea about how the input can be given to the applet. Now, let us see the so this is the program your applet, new applet program where it will read x y w h from the html file and then it will draw a rectangle. Now, let us see how the html file will be in this case. So, what is the change in their html file is there. So, here the html code will be same as earlier html body tag and everything only the code that is required here basically applet code this is the code that needs to be executed and you can write the dot class also ok dot class and then this is the width and height that you have specified that window size and here param name x val and this value equals to 20 that means we want to say that this is the parameter name x value whose value is 20 this is a typical html code that ok x value is now value 20 40 100 and 50 for y value w value and h value respectively. So, this is the html code that you have to write in order to pass the values from an html to the applet code it is there. So, once this html code is there you run this code as usual using applet viewer applet viewer. So, applet viewer can be run here and if you run this html code using applet viewer it will display uh, display the applet look like this. So, it will draw the rectangle which x y coordinate is this one and w is this one and h is this one. So, applet will be drawn. Now, let us run the same program. Uh, but with changing the different value. So, if you want to change the value definitely you have to negotiate the html file there. So, in html file here 20, 40, 150 is written if you give the different value. So, different rectangular will be drawn accordingly. Now, let us see how the new html file can be with the new set of values and then corresponding html can be drawn. So, here again I have rewritten uh, the html file here with the different values 30 13 in this case 
and then corresponding applet will look like this. So, you can change of change while you test it and then writing the different values and then you can run by means of applet viewer you will be able to see that how the different shape it is there. Now, if I ask you that how to in addition to g uh, in addition to drawing a rectangle if I want to print one message here that this is my rectangle how you can do that. You do not have to do anything here especially only the thing that you have to use that you use in the pen method some other uh, other value like. So, for example, in the pen method here in the pen method uh, for example, here here right if you want to draw a message on the applet. So, what you can do is that in instead of g draw rect you use g dot draw string this method and then you can type whatever the string that you want to do. So, you just use this one. So, this way in the pen method you can add any methods of your own to display whatever the content that you want to uh, do it. So, this is the way that okay, the applet can be uh, developed and have a basic idea about how the applet can be uh, developed and then you can execute it using HTML. So, here our objective was to how to write the applet and then the same can be displayed on the screen. Okay, so, we have learned about applet. Now, obviously, there are I mean certain differences between application and applet and as a first look they have the two different structures and as you see here this is the structure of an usual applet look like and here is the structure of a uh, applet and this is the structure of an application. And in case of application you should declare one class called the main class and a main method, but you can see in case of applet there is no main method. Now, obviously, it has implication we will learn about this later on and then. So, this is the one important difference that in case of application one class is there which includes the main method, but in case of applet there is no need of main method and another difference is that an application can include any user defined method. That means, user can give some name of the method and then use it, but in case of applet other than some specific methods user cannot give any methods. So, these are the key differences between the two in addition to there, there are few more difference, there are few more differences also. So, other than the naming and the main class and the main methods that applets needs to be embedded in an HTML page prior to its execution, whereas an application does not require. And so far input output is concerned. Obviously, application will allow to in read any input from any source from keyboard, from file or whatever it is there. But as you see in case of applet this kind of input is not direct input is not possible. If you want to give any input then you should give all those input via an HTML file. And few more salient difference between the two things that applet cannot communicate to other applet or other browser or other machine where an application will be able to communicate that is obviously required for network programming, internet programming then JDBC Java database connectivity and elsewhere, but applet cannot do that. And applet also cannot run any program, program written may be in any other language or any other application from the local computer. So, whereas application can do that and applet also not able to interface with any other programming languages, program written in any other programming languages. 
So, these are the differences obviously the reasons are there why all these are the differences all these are the differences because the, the purpose of these two programs are different that is why the developer makes the differences for us and definitely all these questions and the answer to all these questions that means why so many restrictions in applets are there will be in due course of time. And then obviously another question is that whether we can build an application and applet together. So, obviously what is your idea is that no applet and application are the two separate entity they cannot be built together. Anyway, so we will discuss all these things and many more other things in next lecture slides. Thank you.